blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue thinking about you. You'll be feeling a glow with your Christmas Charles show. But this year there's no Carol Channing or Charles. No? Yes! <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For the first time in That's Kent Entertainment's Christmas Charles history, we haven't been able to get Carol Channing or Charo! David! Honestly. Anyway, we got derailed because of that awful hurricane. I don't know. Tastes pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> now cut that out. This is serious. What's the point of doing a Christmas Carol without Carol, or a Christmas Charl without Carol and Charo? Oh, well, I agree. That is a sad Christmas story. You know, that reminds me of the time that I went to that Christmas brunch with Liza, and I said, now see here, Liza, you put away that mistletoe. I'm not going to be your next husband. That's you! A Christmas story! Huh? My wonderful friend, Caroline O'Connor, is currently up from down under, starring in a Christmas story on Broadway. Ooh, maybe we can't have a Christmas carol, but who says we can't have a Christmas caroline? Oh, you think she'd do it? Oh, I hope so. Why, I could see it now. Caroline in her dressing room, reclining on her chairs. Oh, hello, Ken. I was just reading my lovely novel here. And then she, he kissed her gently on the... Well, that's enough for now, I think. <laughs> Got a refill. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so long, you, me, you, whatever. <laughs> Come on, ladies and gentlemen, to the magic door. Nothing could be final than to be with Caroline O'Connor tonight. Nothing could be sweeter than Caroline when I meet her up that stair flight. Like a Christmas carol line sung right at her door. Sigh! Nothing could be fine, oh, then to be the Caroline, oh, at Christmas time. D oh! Okay. Caroline, my word! Where did Welcome. she come from? Welcome to the heart, Christmas heart of love. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. <laughs> so long. <laughs> And all that trousers, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that dress, start the car. I know we'll be the spot where the gin is cool, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a night liberal and all that. O'Connor, look, we're in the dressing room, again. I know, fantastic. I can't believe it. Okay, so we first met 
when you were doing bombshells in London. Yes. Several years ago. Oh, when, when was that? Two thousand five, uh, six, uh, four. Around that time, yes, yeah. I think. There were six characters, and each of them uh, are different women going through this different stresses in their lives at, at particular points. Such as the first character is a mother. Put baby in bassinet. Stick plug in baby's mouth. Get breakfast quickly, quickly. Can't be late. Always late. Need a coffee. Teacher says we need to make an effort to get Ben to class on time. Teacher says children suffer if they're always late. Hurry, hurry, do the lunches. Hurry up. Lunches, lunches. Oh, money for the lunches. <laughs> and the last character is the diva with beige. Yes. The B-grade cabaret artist. <laughs> Now, I suppose because I sing and dance, there have been elements of those um, talents brought into the piece. That's because Joanna and Simon thought that if I didn't sing and dance at some point of the evening, people would be furious. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I'm going for. You are the reason I am what I am. I've been beaten, I've been stripped. <laughs> I've been walloped and whitewashed and whipped. <laughs> they call me finished and quite diminished. I threw a few down the hatch when they said that I met my match. But my temperature's rising. So you were doing that, and John Barrowman actually is the one who called you up and said, hey, this guy Ken would love to interview you, and he got us together, who knew? And then there was Caroline O'Connor's opening night for I wish if you can, if you have time to see that, seriously, you should talk to her. That oh, show's okay. freaking amazing. Because I could get you in touch with Barry, because you could do, you could interview her, but take it and use it elsewhere. It's um, called Bombshells, okay. and it's a one-woman show. And oh, she I heard is, about that. that is I've, I've known Caroline for years. She was in Moulin Rouge. She was in right, The Lovely right, right. Yeah. Um And she's amazing in this. Really? Oh, you should, yeah, definitely. Should well, that would be great. Well, you know, John and I were friends because of a show we did in London before that called Matador. And oh, so right. we'd, we sort of became really good mates. I played his sister in that show. And also, John helped me out um, by getting me an audition for a film called The Lovely. Because he that. was in that film mm. and he rang me and said, they're looking for an Ethel Merman. And I, he used to hear me doing it sort of backstage right. and said, you've got to get an audition. I'm going to help you out. And so, yeah. But, so, so you, and you, they got us together, which was the most important well, that, uh, yes, of all, of yes, course. Yes, that right there was a, <laughs> there was a summertime Christmas miracle. I don't think it was. But. In all the days, our glimpse of nothing was looked on as something shocking now. You're an icon of the stage, and now you are playing another icon of the stage, Ethel Merman. Like, did, did they ask you when you did the film, did they, were they like, okay, give us the merm? Well, know, or... specifically I knew that they were looking for someone that uh, sounded like her, I, I suppose as much physically like her too as possible. Um, and so I was asked to sing Anything Goes, which was the segment in the film. Right. It's basically the opening night of Anything Goes, and Cole Porter is in the audience with his wife, and they're watching. And so um, they wanted to get someone as close to the original herself. Um, I don't know if you remember the film, but there were lots of very well-known faces yeah. in the film sure. doing vignettes and different yeah, Robbie songs. Robbie Williams and Alanis Morissette and all these yeah, people. Yeah, incredible people. Yeah. But I think, you know, obviously I was probably, I was the only person in that film I'd never heard of because, <laughs> surely, because everyone else was like a, a Sony artist or something. But I think Erwin Winkler, the director specifically, was trying to find someone who could get that sort of real... Anything goes, wow. sort of sound, you know, <laughs> which I always loved as a child. Yeah. So for me to have adored her for so many years and then to get to play her in a film was like incredible. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, they... I've got tapes at home in my house. Well, my mum found them when I was about 11 years old of me singing along to Ethel. Like I would put the album of Gypsy on and I would take myself oh my trying to sound like her. And this was a secret thing I did when, because I used to let myself in after school, my parents did shift work. Work and I would do this like little voice right the same when I saw that film I thought that was my life and so I used to do that and try and and I didn't want to play Dainty June 
Yeah. Or Louise, I was like, here she is, boys! <laughs> I wanted to be Rose, you know. Your which, I, Rose. which I got to do last year, finally, <laughs> in, in England. No. Yeah. And I obviously would have to do Gypsy at some point, oh, somewhere. Yeah. That would be great. When I'm older. Everything's coming up roses this time for me. This is Dolly Parton here with my buddy on Kent Entertainment. Kent, that's Kent Entertainment. Kent, that's Kent Entertainment. Okay, let me do it again. Stay on, keep it rolling, though. No. And that's Kent Entertainment. And I'm Dolly Parton. You were Australian, and as we know, but you were born in England, though, right? I was born in England in a town called Oldham, which is spelt Old Ham. <laughs> I'd like say nothing. No, come on. Let's just no. and then cut. Let's just leave the it. There. That's the An theater old way. Ham, the yeah. old... Honey, if I want to go see theater, I'll go see a play with no singing and dancing. should have but we'd never done the show before so we really didn't know how long it was going to take so we you might have never to lose a couple on monday no, but we'll see we'll no, see you did not overstay your welcome at all but but before i do and you've got a life to live and you probably want to eat dinner and do it stuff i'm gonna let you go thank you so thank but you. thank you so much always oh, a joy a always a joy you to so see sweet. you yeah so always thank you here. so much for your support for being here mm, mm. love you now make sure you keep watching his show and <laughs> listening to him on the radio because he's amazing and knows everything about the biz. Oh. I always wanted to work in the West End and always wanted to work on Broadway. Right. So and I wanted to make that a reality. Yeah, I mean, I mean, between the Sydney Opera House, you're doing shows and, and doing things in Edinburgh. I and, I mean, and the Royal Albert Hall, I'm like, <sighs> seriously, I haven't been caught out yet. No, <laughs> come on. no, you're. <laughs> Someone's going to go, she's an imposter. They know what they're doing. <laughs> and now here you are on Broadway. And you did Chicago uh, several years back, but now here you are doing A Christmas Story. I know. And now this was something that, now you said you were kind of familiar, but you hadn't seen the film. Have you seen the film yet? I have seen the film. I loved it, of course, but we've never really seen it in England or Australia. So It is beloved here. I know. America. It's like it's like this incredibly loved film like no other okay. and the audience every night go wild for it I mean the dialogue they seem to know it it's like they they, oh, it's they true. yeah they see that box coming on and Frigile just goes through the roof and and all those moments like the guy the little boy getting his tongue stuck to the pole and it's such a tradition <laughs> and when we were standing in front of the theater before coming in here some guy walked by and he said to his friend you're gonna shoot your eye out bam <laughs> right there so it's like wow this it was, is amazing. And now you get to play the teacher who, in the in the movie, you know, has has a, a smaller part than the spectacular turn. Can I say that? Look at me. I'm kissing butt, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm allowed to. <laughs> She's so good. You have the most fantastic number in the show. And you're as good as married. I see it right there. I see the book. There it is. There it is. Can you tell us a little bit about I have to. this? This is hilarious. During rehearsals, um, John Rando, um, but we were talking about the moments when I'm not being the teacher, like just the m moments when the kids are in sort of a fantasy sequence and I said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to, for me to maybe be reading a novel, perhaps something like a romance novel? Well, they discovered that there was this book during the set that period. <laughs> That's good as married. It says here, she was his wife in everything but name. Oh. 
Um, and as you can see from the picture, uh, I'm only, where am I? I'm probably about six You're pages. You're really reading in. I'm it really though. reading it. Oh my because gosh. this is not the book I use on stage. There's a mock up one on stage. But the pro my props uh, lady, Kirshta, shout out, found this on the internet and bought it for me for opening night as an opening night gift. Oh so I actually gosh. get to read the real book. At the moment it's snowing and he's just left the army, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Wow. But yeah, so that was an idea just for her to have, you know, that kind of uh, <laughs> school teacher image, but underneath there with the red nails and who knows yeah. what's going on underneath that. Uh, I love it, you gotta have that backstory. I think so, because you, then when she does the number later, the fantasy sequence, which is yes. this tap number and she's wearing a red satin dress and she's really out there, it's almost like that would be the maybe the other version of Miss Shields, the, the sexy, out there kind of yeah. uh, character. <laughs> A great little concept, just to add that little touch of, um, you know, fancy. Yeah, which and it works so well because, well, you have to see it. You only have till the thirtieth. You only have till the thirtieth, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not used to this widescreen world we live in now. I don't know where to go. I don't want to block you. <laughs> Can but you scoot your chair just a little bit? Can I? Okay, Sal. Okay, no. Sal. Here, we'll just sit like this. How was this? We'll just talk like this. Just you know? like, I don't want to just. Oh, let's just talk shows. No. Okay, let's say let's say. I'm favorite? in heaven. <laughs> My favorite of all. What's so the one right now? Well, probably a Christmas story, I would say. It's probably a favorite one right now, isn't right it? Right now, because let's face it, I mean, it's like it's like <laughs> doing a role on Broadway, on Broadway, that no one's ever done. You know, it's yeah. a kind of really kook, uh, kooky and amazing thing that happened that this show came along, you know, yeah. to get to do something like this uh, that's so loved. And also, I think this is just going to take off. I think it's going to end up going all around America. Yeah. The writing, the writers, uh, oh. Justin Paul and Ben Chapasek yeah. are phenomenal. Yeah. So. They're lovely. And not only Big that, talent. but young guys too. I mean, young. for Broadway, wow. I mean, I, I think I've, I've been their age twice. <laughs> uh, not together, but I actually think almost just no. about. Yeah, truly. I don't know. And, well, and how perfect too that it's Christmas time because then you get to have the most awesome dressing room in all isn't of Broadway. It pretty? Look it's at so this. It's so pretty. I have to put them all up. It's a bit. Somebody told me I look like I'm in hoarders, but I, I actually. The Christmas hoarder. <laughs> Christmas hoarder. I love a it. new musical by Pascal Paul. <laughs> um, but I do, and all the little things that people bought us, like little presents and trinkets and stuff. And this is a major award, actually, for my little girl Beatrice, who's just left to do another show. Oh. She gave us all the major award. And I love that, but I also love out of camera range. <laughs> what's in the corner over here. Can you, can you get a little shot of that over there? Come on, you can do it, you can show it. It's all right, that's right. This is what keeps you going a during intermission. Of of no, I'm and kidding. in the fridge I'm there's, um, there's a, a, a couple of more. There's one from lovely Emily Skinner who's coming to see okay. the show tonight, Get, left one for me. And also there's a, a, another Verve and there's a Gordon Mum from my friend Patrick from Paris. So we're well stocked. Aren't they nice here? Well stocked for the end of the week. Or, Aaron Dilly, John Bolton, and Dan Laurie, Laurie, myself, and all the older ones, we all get on great. And, the older ones. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, we manage to sit and have a little drinky together or something. On the, yeah. and I know you can't get a shot of this now, maybe we'll cut to it later, but the chaise lounge and the, the, the lovely heart of, of... I have a Christmas heart. Christmas heart. We won't call it the other heart that we said. Well, I will tell you that yes. my dresser said it, it was a Chris, it looks the like Christmas brothel. <laughs> Lights. The Bordello Heart. The Bordello Heart no. of Broadway. <laughs> New musical by There's a Bordello Caroline Heart for every line in Broadway. Broadway. And most of them are in here. <laughs> Actually, I do have a little comedy lights up there too, but I, I love it. Like everything in the cards mean so much. I have a loft full of boxes of cards. Oh my gosh. Because I've kept them all. I just figure that like, when I'm, because I've been doing this now for 30 years, 30 years in the business. My word. I mean, years from now, I think when I'm really tired and nothing works anymore because I'm, you know, sort of my hips have gone and 
and uh, you know the, the old belt's worn out, I'll be able to sit and go through these boxes of cards and read all these sure. beautiful messages. Because, I mean, handwritten things are disappearing, right? Yes, yes. It's going to be emails and technically, but I won't be able to use a computer because I'll be stupid. But I love quill and parchment. I love writing cards. I, I love the purse. Yes, please do. I love handwritten cards. So. There's yeah. still an art to it. Everything now is texting and everything's taken out and how many characters on the Twitter? I don't understand the Twitter. I know, I'm very old-fashioned like that, so mm -hmm. I, I, I miss it. You know, yeah. I suppose Christmas time is the only time when really people make the effort, although even that's becoming just emails and texts, mm -hmm. isn't it? See, I just found a note in an old box the other day from somebody from 1998, but it was, it was, it was actually like a letter. It was a letter. I haven't seen one in so long. You were like, I'm not I even think kidding. it was a letter. I'm that's not even right, kidding. I remember the word. <laughs> I am so excited to get to see you again because the first time we met in that dressing room, in that dressing room, I was by myself. I don't have my trusty cameraman here, but I was by myself, and I just remember us wanting to get this done. I was like, "Where am I gonna put this mic?" And I, I and you grab some duct tape. You, I don't know if you remember this, and you're like, <laughs> "Let's put it on here." And I'm thinking, like, Bernadette Peters would never be ripping <laughs> off this. So this, you, I loved you for the moment I met you. I really did. It I was, was like, probably Gaffer, because let's be honest, Gaffer. Gaffer okay. Like, it fixes everything. <laughs> you know, you it's know, true. Your voice is weird. If you just put a bit of Gaffer there, it just fixes everything. I just thought this is a can-do kind <laughs> of star. I'm I was brought up, you know, like an Australian. Yeah, you know, like in the bush, so you know, we do what we can. Right. Don't worry, Shakespeare. You'll get your end in once the Duke gets his end in. Of course, you've done the movies at Moulin Rouge, which, yeah, but you broke something, didn't you? Did you I sprained an ankle oh, one, one week before I shot the tango. Yeah. We've been rehearsing for about three months. Training even, we've been training for it because you know the can cam was very strenuous and the tango and the Indian uh, number we did as well. Yeah. And um, I've been going to the gym when I wasn't called to do dance rehearsals, I went to the gym and I did a um, aerobic class and I twisted my ankle. I came up like an elephant's foot and I was shooting the following Tuesday, I think this was on like the Thursday. And I went into the studio and I went, this brother just said, oh my god, I don't know what I'm going to do. And they were like, calm, calm down, you're going to be absolutely fine. You know, I've got a great person here, they strapped it up and I worked on it for a few days. I mean, it didn't feel great, there was no way I was going to miss out <laughs> on doing that it's fantastic thrilling. number, you know. They were really patient and caring and wonderful about it, but I was so upset because I'd waited. You know, with movies, everything's scheduled so tightly and I knew there was no way we could change it, so. But thankfully, you it know, I didn't out. break it. I sprained know. it, and yeah, I don't think you can tell. I don't think you can even see any of the footage. That you know, because it you know, it's bandaged. Yes, yeah, it's pretty thick bandage around the the ankle. And uh, I, feel, I don't think I've ever told anybody this on on um, on a show before. You've got a well, you've got a bit of a scoop here. <laughs> um, yeah, how did you get that information that it's making me wonder? <laughs> well, it was Somebody must have stuff. told you. Yeah. It's ending silly. Why would the courtesan go for the penniless rights? Whoops. I mean, sitar player. Keep your mind open. Like, don't just think I'm going to be in cats and that's it. I think you should, you know, maybe keep the possibilities open there. I started as an Irish dancer, then a ballet dancer, then a musical theatre dancer, and then I started singing, and then I started doing film. And so, you know, I just, you just keep moving, and I think that I keep an open mind. It's just, it's, it's a passion, you know, you have to you have to give up a lot to be in the business. You miss a lot of christenings, a lot of birthdays, a lot of <laughs> weddings, a lot of special occasions and 21st birthdays, and, and you miss a lot because you're here. Like, for instance, this week we're doing nine shows. Now you're going to miss Christmas? We're not going to miss Christmas. <laughs> you have it every night here a little <laughs> bit. Exactly, yeah. wow, that's well, really See, you're cool. making up for all those missed we're Christmases. making all those Christmases I miss for all see, those years. See, it all comes back to you if you're doing it with a pure heart and Yeah, it's very intentions. emotional too. Being in this show at this time of year, in this city, it's extraordinary. And I just feel so fortunate to be here, you know, at this time and in this great, great show. Well, I'm so happy that Thanks, I'm Kate. here with you. Give us a few. Oh, for like, sure. Oh. I love oh, seeing so you. See you. Really, so you know, now, when, you, when are we going to meet again? I don't know. I don't, maybe next time we'll be tapping together. You know, I'm going to get. I'm going to put my shoe, my tap shoes back on. <laughs> I know! 
It's four flights of stairs, too. I know. Some people can't make it, but thank you for coming. <laughs> I made it. We made it with a crew and everything. So, anyway, thank you so much. My pleasure. It was fun. Thanks, bye. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. You can cry. You can pop. I'm telling you, kid, that there's no doubt. You shoot your I just like to say thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> you hear something? Oh, I think I hear bells. Now, where is that racket coming from? Uh, oh, Pancho Joe! Hi, kid! Oh, well, uh, pardon me. Uh, I'm getting a call from my That's Kentertainment phone. <laughs> Let's see. Now. Oh. Hola! Charo? <laughs> hey, we wish you the best. Salud, amor, dinero, cuchi cuchi, y mucho tiempo para disfrutar la vida. Aw, thanks, Charo. I really appreciate that. Oh, hang on, I got a call on the other line. Well, I do, I'm Carol. <laughs> Carol Channing? Carol Channing? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I'm Charo on the other line right now, and I, I was so bummed earlier when I couldn't give y'all as my yearly gift to the fans. Ken. Yeah. The greatest thing in the world is to realize that you are their Christmas present. You are their new, you're starting their new year on New Year's Eve or on New Year's Day. You are their glorious present. I am? Yeah. Well, heck, Carol. I think you're right. I am their present. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what presents we give, just as long as you feel my presence. <laughs> so I'd like to say a big thank you to Carol, Charo, and Caroline. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> oh, I, are you guys still there? Hello? <laughs> uh, hello? Feliz Navidad. <laughs>